tonight we're going to be coming from Acts, Acts chapter 16. I know that's a very familiar text. But when she gave it to me, they, they always tell you, if you're a minister, you're supposed to have one in the chamber. Because you never know when you're going get to the, get the call. I used to get the call a week ahead of time, two weeks. But you, you may get two days. You may get two days. But nevertheless, I always keep a word and ask, ask the Lord, what is it that you will have me to say to your people? What is it that your people need to hear from you on tonight? So I honor him. Let me see. Everybody got Acts chapter 16. And we're going to... This is a story about Paul and Silas. I like this because Paul and Silas was... They was doing what God called them to do. They were just minding their business, doing the will of God. And things start to happen. The enemy like to come in. When, when you're when you on the right track, you best to believe that the enemy is coming. He's going to come. There's no way around it. Now, if you're not on the right track, you may not be bothered because, you know, you're you playing with him. So, But nevertheless, okay, we're going to start at verse 16. Let me find out I need glasses. And it reads, once as we were on our way to prayer, and it was going to pray, a slave girl met us who had a spirit of prediction. She made a large profit for her owners by fortune telling. As she followed Paul and us, she cried out, these men who are proclaiming to, be, to you the way of salvation are the slaves of the most high God. And she did this for many days. But Paul was greatly aggravated. And he and turning to the spirit and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. He used his authority. He didn't play with it. He didn't pity pat. He just used his authority and cast that thing out. And it came out right away. When her owners saw that their, pro their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the market, marketplace to the authorities. Bringing them before the chief magistrates, they said, these men are seriously disturbing our city because you're doing the will of God and you corrected some things. The enemy going to get mad. So you best, oh, he's coming. When you try to correct some stuff, oh, yeah, he's going to come after you. They are Jews and they are promoting customs that are not legal for us as Romans to adopt or practice. They don't want, want you to become free. They used to bondage. Then the mob joined in and attacked, attacked against them. And the chief magistrate stripped off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods. Then he's going to try to beat you. Strip you to, make you, to uh, bring shame upon you and then beat you. After they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them in jail, ordering the jailer to keep them securely guarded receiving such an order he put them into the inner prison and sec and secured their feet in the stocks now i didn't know what stocks was but i looked it up they were like that's painful i'm thinking just regular old ropes oh no this is uncomfortable they put them in an uncomfortable pos in comfortable position while they was in jail you don't just throw me in jail but you got me uncomfortable too Worse than being locked up. This is my favorite part. Then it said, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Then suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's chains came loose. Amen. You may be seated. This, this story really blessed me because I, I think about how we as believers, we, we, we try to walk a straight and narrow path and we try to do what's right, what God has called us to do. And then we find ourselves something happening to shake us up. But I'm looking at Paul and Silas and they are real good examples of how we're supposed to be when trouble comes. How we're supposed to be when the enemy comes. How are we supposed to just stand and just trust God in the midst of it? 
So my question to you tonight, do you really trust God? Do you really, can you really sit and ask, your, just ask yourself now, do I really trust God in the midst of everything that go on? Because it's just 16 days into the year and trust me, the enemy have already started. The enemy is, is he like, oh, y'all made it to 2020. Oh, you think you got clear vision? Okay, let me see if I can shake some stuff up. And that's what, he, that's what he come to do. So ask yourself, do I really trust him? Do I trust God? Do I trust who he really is? Because right here, Paul and Silas, they, they didn't even, they, they didn't, I, I didn't hear them complain about it, getting beaten. You beat me, you stripped me, beat me, throw me in jail, then got me in an uncomfortable position. What, what am I supposed to do? But I can't help but to believe they still say, you know what, God, I trust you. I, I don't understand what you're doing. I know I didn't do nothing wrong because I was in the, on my way going to prayer and the enemy came in like a rushing flood and he just started re wreaking havoc on me. God, you know what? I trust you. Okay, I'm going to go to jail. So many times though when we, when we get things coming up against us and the enemy come and hit us with a blow or two or three, we don't do that. We snap, crackle, and pop. We, for, we actually forget about, Lord, I trust you. We forget about that it's a bigger picture than what we're going through. We forget about that. He said that all things work together. That means the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because in the end, because he is orchestrating everything, that he is going to perfect that thing in the end. And he's going to get the glory out of it. They believed that because they went there and they got locked up. And I know they was like, you know, I don't know what's going on. But you know what? I'm going to pray. How about this, Paul? You go ahead and pray, and I'm going to sing. We're going to pray, and we're going to praise, and we're going to see what God's going to do because God can't, if you praying and you praise, and you, he can't help but to come see about his people. See, we get so caught up in the issue that's going on, we forget to give him glory, even in spite of. So we, we turn, and we start looking at the issue and start magnifying the issues. Oh, woe is me, man. Oh, yeah, they done, just, they done beat me. They done stripped me. They done knocked me down, but God, you know, no, no. God, I know you got to be great in this. God, I don't, I don't know what you got, but I know something big is coming because the enemy have came in. He have stripped me. He have embarrassed me. He had messed up my character. He talked about me. He lied on me. He did all this. God, so God, what are you up to? How about this? I'm going to pray. I'm going to praise. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to praise, and I'm going to see what you're going to do. They prayed, and they praised, and they prayed, and they praised, and keep in mind, people are listening. They are watching. So they want to see how you're going to act. Are you going to snap, crackle, or pop, or you're going to pray and you're going to praise? Because in the end, because your obedience, praying, and praising, other people in the jail benefited from it. Yeah. They changed, became free. They, they probably weren't even asking for it because they said, we know we did wrong. We know we're supposed to be here. But God, because they was in the right place at the right time. Not all, they, you know what? They may not have been free from the jail, but I guarantee you they mindset changed on where they was at. They wasn't thinking, oh, whoa, it's me. That was like, you know what? We just encountered something that I don't even understand. Even the man that locked them up, he came and said, you know, he wanted to kill himself because they got loose. And Paul said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. We ain't going nowhere. We right here. We just lose. He said, you know, what must I do to get saved? Even the ones that bring this up against you going to have to come to you and say, what must I do to be saved? What can I do to know the God that you serve? Because surely we done beat you. We done knocked you down. We done talked about you. We done embarrassed you. But you still prayed and you still praised him. What must I do to serve that God? Because that's the God I want to serve. That's the God I want to serve. It's so many times we get caught up. We got to stop getting, 2020 should be, I'm going to stop getting caught up in my issue and start praising my God. We say God is bigger. If he's bigger, then why are you praising that little situation? That little small thing. Because all he got to do is speak a word. All he got to do is speak a word. And if y'all like me, I like to, to, to have an illustration. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have some illustration and show y'all what actually happened. Can you come? Can you come, jailer, and tie him up? We're gonna have Paul and Silas on this side. Come on over here, Silas. We got Paul and Silas. Y'all can sit down right there. We're gonna show y'all what happened. Glory, God. Glory to your holy name, God. Glory. 
Glory, 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 glory. Yeah, that's good. Glory. They tied up that now. This is the one that needs to be in jail because he, he knew he's supposed to be there. So he just accepting it. He's accepting his responsibility. Yeah, I did it, so I'm just going to go ahead and wait my time out. But Paul and Silas, they didn't do nothing. They was on their way praying. They was on their way doing what God said. They had just left talking to Lydia and convinced her to convert and, and, and believe in God. And she was so excited. She offered them to stay in the house. So they was already, they was doing what they were supposed to do. How many times have you was doing what you're supposed to do and the enemy just came and just knocked you upside your head and you're like, nigga, God, I'm not understanding. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. So why did he come? Because God said, have you considered? Have you considered? Have you considered? Because he know that you're walking that straight and he letting the enemy know, I don't care what you bring against Paul and Silas, they not going to turn their back on me. They not going to not praise me. They don't care what it look like. They don't care what it seemed like. They're going to still give me the praise. So I'm going to read it again, Paul and Silas, and y'all let me know what y'all going to do. Okay, we're going to go back to... We're going to go to 24. I'm going to start at 24. After receiving such an order, he put them in the inner prison and secured their feet in stocks but tonight we're going to use their hands then it said about midnight Paul and Silas they were praying and they were singing hymns I don't, Paul, I don't hear y'all I know God ain't answer that type of prayer and praise come on So as they were singing and they were praising, the prisoner was listening. He like, what is that over there? Who making that noise? Who over there praying and praising? What they singing about? So he ear hustling over there because he trying to find out. But let me tell you, all of a sudden, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Now that part made me happy because I said, you know what, when you're in the midst of it, it's going to be all of a sudden. All of a sudden, God going to come and see about you. All of a sudden, the thing that had you bound ain't going to have you bound no more. All of a sudden, he said, suddenly, suddenly he caused an earthquake. He caused an earthquake and oh my God, my God, my God, the foundations of the jail were shaken and Paul and Silas became loose. And not only was they loose, not only did they get loose, because he was in the midst of it and he heard a thing, he became loose. And he began to praise God just because he was in the midst of it. That's how God is. Everybody that's in the vicinity of where you at when you praying and you praising, they can't help but get affected by it. You got to infect somebody with their praise. Infect somebody with their worship. That's how God is. Don't worry about what the enemy doing. Don't worry about it. We're going to have to take this same attitude on Sunday morning. When your brother and your sister are sitting in these seats and they don't know, they can't move, you looking like, why they ain't praising God? You just pray and praise. You just pray and praise and create the atmosphere and let that worship spill over on them because then they'll be able to get up like he did and they will begin to praise God. But we too busy being concerned about ourselves and we forgetting about the other people. Jesus didn't come for himself. He came for some else he came for the ones that don't know him he came for the ones that was lost he came to seek and save those that was lost and he was concerned about the people yes. Paul and Silas was concerned he said you know we can't allow this situation to get us down what we gonna do when we stuck in the between a rock and a hard place we gonna pray and we gonna praise and whoever's around it they coming out they coming out they coming out Ooh, glory to your name. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Just sometimes we have to see it. And it's not that we don't believe it, but sometimes we got to see. God, what is it? Because I'm a visual person. I need to let me see what you're talking about. I can understand it better when I see it. And you can see how things just happen. And now not only was they praying, he was praying, he was shouting. He would, you know, and it didn't even take all that. It just take you being obedient to the word of God, praying and praising. Praying and praising. Glory, glory, glory. So many times the enemy will plague our mind. And it don't have to be a physical jail. It can be the jail of our mind. 
the mind they said the battlefield is in the mind when you have our mind it's like we don't know what to do we just we're, we're just perplexed we like lord what, what is that we be in bondage and then we that's when we just look at the issues woe is me oh i don't have enough money oh i don't have this but you forgetting that you're here you living you you got the use of your limbs you forgetting that somebody didn't make it into 2020 you forgetting that even on today somebody is gone they didn't make it you forgetting every minute it's like somebody is leaving here you forgetting he's you still here you still breathing you still moving my god and the truth of the matter is god is bigger than any issue of yours He's bigger than that. If we really, really, really realize who God is and put him where he belongs, which is up high, we won't, be, we won't be babysitting these issues. We won't babysitting these. We, won't, we don't do it. I made a conscious decision, 2020, God, you know what? He, he asked me, he said, why do you keep asking me for stuff that you can do on your own? Give me something that you can't do because if you can do it on your own, you don't need me. And I'm like, God, you know what? I said, you, you, you're right. So I started, I did a vision board. I got it from my sister, Lady Graham. I did me a vision board. I said, you know what, God? I want this. God, you know what? I want this paid off. I want this. I want things that money can't buy. I want, F, I want all this. And I'm looking at my vision board. And my God, my, give me another week or so. When I tell y'all the testimony that's about to come forth that God is doing that I'm watching him do, you're going to, you Ain't nobody but God because the money don't add up. The, ain't, no, ain't no money adding up in the way things are flowing. My God is greater. I'm in awe. I'm just like, I can't do nothing. I'm speechless. I'm like, God, give me something that I can work with. I need, I need it to be where you can't even touch that. And I'm going to do it to where can't man touch it either because you know what? Ain't nobody going to get this glory. Nobody. They're going to look up and they're going to say, oh, that had to be God. That had to be God. My God, y'all just don't understand. God is so, 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 so awesome. He is just, it's not even, that, that ain't even the right word to describe him. That's the closest I can get. He just, he just good. You know how they say? He just, mm, mm, good. He just, Tony the Tiger, great. He just, all that. It's like, you just came to, you just like, man, it's, he's just more than that. He's so much more than that. If we just really grab a hold of that, if we really grab a hold to who he really is, the little things that, that the enemy plagued with us, we won't even let that. Your kids acting up, that won't even bother you. Because you already know you wrestle not against flesh and blood. He already gave you the blueprint. He already mapped it out. You don't have to, when, when things come up, I got sued this past year. I got sued for $4,000. I ain't got $4,000. And I said, God, you know, I don't know. Got a lawyer. I don't even know. The lawyer couldn't take me. I didn't even know I had, was finna get sued. Oh, you finna get sued? No. And yes, I was. And just, what, two weeks ago, the lawyer called me. I ain't going to no court. I ain't going to no nothing. The lawyer called me. I got some good news. I was like, we went to court? I went to court, and guess what? You ain't got to pay nothing. You ain't got to pay nothing. And the truth of the matter is, I was in the wrong. I owed the $4,000. That was my fault. But my prayer had been, God, you know what? Forgive me when I was in my ignorant state. Forgive me. Give me another chance to get it right. Wipe the slate clean. And I'm going to show you that I, I can do it. Be a better steward of my finances. Just wipe it clean, God. Give me. A, you say you're a God of another chance, oh God. Give me another chance, oh God. Forgive me for what I've done, God. And he is doing that step by step by step by step. I don't no longer look at my kids. I'm like, oh, they're not. No, you know what? I'm going to call you who you are, prophet. I'm going to call you who you are, man of God, woman of God. I'm going to call you out because that's who you are. Now my whole perception has changed. Now I don't no longer look at the situation. No, I don't wrestle against that. You know what? No, this is what it is. I, don't, I look at me and my husband. We, we're, we're ministers. We're preaching the gospel. We're helping married couples because we didn't go through what we went through to just sit on it. No, other people need to know that. You know what? The enemy will try to tear you up and rip you up, but you know what? We stood on the word of God, and it may look the rocky. It may, we may have got a divorce, but guess what? He, not even divorce can stop what God is trying to do. When God is in the midst of it, nothing matters. Nothing matters. My God, that's the type of God that I serve. So tonight was just to come to encourage you. Hold on. Don't let the enemy shake you. 
Don't let him say, oh, no. You stand on what you know. You stand on the word of God. And you trust God in the midst of it. Trust God in the midst of whatever's going on. Trust him even when you can't trace him. Trust him when you don't even understand. Trust him even when it hurts. You got to trust him. Trust him when it's painful. Just trust him. Yeah, you can cry, but guess what? Don't let the enemy see you cry. Go in your closet and cry out to God. Don't let him see you sweat. Don't let him see you. No, you go and you tell God all about your problems. Don't even call your home girl, your homeboy. Go and tell God and watch God vindicate you. Watch him deal with that concerning you because he said, I will perfect that which concerns you. That means whatever's bothering you, whatever's ill in you, I'm going to deal with that. Whoever it is, I'm going to deal with that. My God. So I got a couple of scriptures to let y'all go home with and that y'all can just read on and meditate just so you will know, you know, God is with me no matter what. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all, all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That's what Paul and Silas, they trusted him. They trust. We got to learn that. Y'all read that scripture. Get that, let that be like an anthem to you. Just trust him. When you don't think you, you have enough trust, you know what, God? I'm going to do it anyway. I put it up on my mirror. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. And Romans 15 and 1. This is for the ones that are strong. Because we have some that their faith is not where ours is at. So those of us who have a strong faith must be patient with the weakest of those whose faith is not so strong. We must not think only of ourselves. We got, if we, we say that we're strong, then that means that somebody else is weak. So we need to cover them. We need to make sure that we, we're not putting our mouths on them. Shut your mouth. You turn God's people down. You don't want to be in trouble with the Lord because you're opening your mouth and talking on stuff that you don't even know. You don't know what that person going through. When you add that little added stress, that can make them go out there and blow their brains out. Shut up. Pray for, if you see an issue, pray for them. Love on them. It don't cost nothing to go over there and say, hey, sis, how you doing? It's been plenty of times that all I needed was a hug. And when I got that hug, I was like, I'd be like, oh, where is Lady Pam at? Because she gave the best hugs. Hug me and hug that right on off. Just for just being patient and understanding and covering your brothers and sisters. In Psalms 135 and 14. This bless me. The Lord will provide justice for his people and have compassion on his servant. The Lord. The Lord, I think about so many times where people have, have dogged me and have did me wrong and did me dirty and, and, and thought they got away with it because the, the Lord told me, shut your mouth, be quiet. Lord, but they did. Just for instance, someone spit in my face. And I, I say this all the time, like literally hocked up and spit in my face. And my first reaction was busting her chest. But the Lord said, no. Just wipe your face off and walk away. My face off, walk away. Where they do that at? I'm not Jesus. But I did exactly what he said. And, and to this day, she had to come back and apologize to me. She had to come back and apologize. Even people who did me wrong when I was a little girl, he had bring them, brought them back. Before they left this earth, they had to come back and they had to apologize to me. And I've watched him. So he will provide justice. Whatever it is, he going to do it. And I'm a living witness. He will do it. We just got to take him at his word. Stop faking it and really faith it. Because it's, it's too much faking it. It's too much. You got to faith this thing and you got to do it for real. And be honest, if, you don't, if you're not there, you're just not there. That's what prayer for. That's what your leaders are for. We have to do this thing because 2020, just like God is really moving, or oh, the devil want to amp up too. He like, let me, my time is really running out. They got the 2020? Oh, no. But we're going we gonna to stand. We're going to stand on his word. We're going to trust God. We're going to believe God. Can you play that for me? I just want to play a little bit of a song for y'all. They just blessed me as I was preparing. And we just have to think about that. Think about trusting him. Do we really trust God? I had to question myself because sometimes I, I, I get out of it. I, I, I have failed to trust this. I, I failed because it seemed like it was too big for God to do. 
But when you spoke to me and, and told me, I was like, you know what, God, you're right. You created me. You did this. And so I take him at his word. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your holy name, O oh God. Glory to your holy name, O oh God. Father, I thank you, O oh God. I thank you for these your people on tonight, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for them having an ear to hear, O oh God, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight, O oh God. I honor you, O oh God. I honor you, Father. I honor you. I bless you, O oh God. Father, and I ask you, O oh God, to keep this word in their heart, O oh God. Keep it in their heart, O oh God. Write it on the tablets of their heart, O oh God, that they won't forget your word, what you said to them on tonight, to trust you, O oh God. That they won't forget that, that they will understand, O oh God, that when they come to church and they come to service, it is to lift your name on, up on high, O oh God. It's to pray and to praise you, O oh God, because their they're praying and, and praising is going to help loose the bands on somebody else, O oh God. Father, help them get out they self, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God.